it's it's got a mel- melodic background to it or it's not like it's not like hitting you over the head but you know, it might as well be you know if it's subtle enough sometimes that's the stuff that hits harder you know uh my name is jahari terry i am a dj i'm a music producer and i'm a, a music supervisor and i also am a vinyl curation acquirer um if you were looking for records i could do that service for you i have been djing in la um, and curating curating playlists for people for about eight years i was making mixtapes when i was like 12 for like friends and stuff so i've always kind of done that you know when you like put a tape in and you record it from the radio like i've done that since i was able to do that my dad listened to smooth jazz, but then he would also do this thing where he would just, the song would come on and he would be like, what is this? You have five seconds. So then like that totally helped me memorize like music really fast and, re- and remember who the artist was and what sound was happening. And then fast forward to uh, when I was like a teenager, I had moved to San Francisco and then I started to do a lot of graffiti. But in that time period, I was hanging out with a bunch of people who uh, were DJs. So I was learning from them without actually picking up records or any of that stuff. I was just hanging out with them and learning kind of like the craft of DJing. The click for me was when I moved back to Oakland. Wasn't necessarily necessarily Black Lives Matter movement, like a little bit right before that, when a lot of uh, black and brown kids were just getting were getting murdered. I took it upon myself to um, do some type of protest where I would have my little turntable, a portable turntable, a portable speaker, and I would just play um, set up in different areas in Oakland, and I would just play uh, Jay Dilla's Donuts. I am this uh, this black kid sitting outside taking up space and i thought that that was just something that um needed to happen at that time because i was in i was so enraged of what was going on but it was really hard trying to talk to people about it so i thought it was important for me to be outside and show myself in a way that i could connect with people but also i could uh, talk about how frustrated i was through the music and I feel like Jay Dillo's Donuts does that incredibly because of the sounds that he's creating and the mix and the the mixes he's putting in. The, the, his production is amazing, and the beats that he created on the album were while he was dying. So it was like it it was like almost like a twofer. Like this person who created this sound has passed already. He's trying to tell you a story through his music, and also these people in in real time are passing or getting murdered mostly and i'm an i'm a person who's alive who can help push that story along of like we're here we're not going anywhere and we also want to let you know that we're amazing at things and we'll continue to be amazing at things and you can't change that with murdering us because we'll constantly have things that we leave behind in this specific playlist for asmoa I wanted it to be very jazz driven, like a story from like front to back. Like I wanted it to to have have waves. I wanted it to kind of take a journey. Every song kind of is talking with each other and blues. Like, I think the point of it was to create like a nice melodic sound out of the color. So I was trying to like also put that in there with the color too, because while you're looking at the work in this in the gallery, you're asking questions you're wondering about the pieces you're walking like slowly through it and you're trying to figure out like where is this going and you know essence has a story that she's trying to tell as she as she has you walk through either clockwise or counterclockwise so i wanted to make sure that if you were listening to something through that whole time that you were there that it was it could bend and shake with the stuff that you were looking at I was listening to that playlist that I made while painting. So it like definitely uh, held my attention. So there's like all obviously like sporadic colors and parts in there. 
um, and a lot of movement in the middle section. But what I wanted to make sure was that the blues on the top and the bottom were uh, were seen and were like uh, very much like those catch the eye. But then when you move into the center, that's when it kind of like it starts to vibrate. Sometimes paintings are are funny because you have an idea for a thing and you want to like make it contextually true, but also you just want to paint. So at this moment, I feel like when I had the blue background and I was working on the oil spill, it turned into way more than just like, this is about the oil spill at Huntington Beach. And I just want to be like, eh, you know, but I think it came out really nice. Like, and the texture in there, I think is what holds it, like holds it together. And I was trying to get people to like touch the painting when they're in the library to actually like touch it. And I hope that they are still touching it because I think it's what, it's what brings it alive. It, it, it's what connects the person to, you know, like the context and the concept of it too, especially with, yeah, especially with the blues and like how those relate to the show, but also relate to just like what's going on right now. Like we have an idea of what's happening and when it's happening, we're, we have a, we have like a, a feeling or a reaction to it, but then literally like two minutes later, we're like onto something else. My, my idea was kind of just like, imagine if there was a, um, an oil spill and like a beautiful mountain range, like, would we just drive over it and, and get gas because that's what we do anyway? Or like, would we like actually stop and be like, yo, we need to like clean this up. I feel like people would, t would take it ser more seriously if it like was involved in like a forest compared to, to the, the vast ocean, you know? So it's just like, it was like, that's the alternate reality is like, the idea that maybe one day we'll take care of it, or maybe one day we'll wake up to the idea that things need to change. And there's a, there's definitely a reality where people are doing that, you know, where like society as a whole, like is, is about the good of the common man or woman or, you know, human.